It was almost 5 a.m. I returned to my room, my head full of crickets and gunfire. In the lower bunk, Audrey was snoring, a low, contented hum that invited me to do the same. Instead, I climbed up to my bed, crossed my legs, and looked out the window. Five passed, then six. At seven, Grandma appeared, and I watched her pace up and down her patio, turning every few moments to gaze up the hill at our house. Then, she and Grandpa stepped into their car and pulled onto the highway. When the car was gone, I got out of bed, and I ate a bowl of bran with water. Outside, I was greeted by Luke's goat, Kamikaze, who nibbled my shirt as I walked to the barn. I passed the go-kart Richard was building from an old lawnmower. I sopped the pigs, filled the trough, and moved Grandpa's horses to a new pasture. After I'd finished, I climbed the railway car and looked out over the valley. It was easy to pretend the car was moving, speeding away, that any moment the valley might disappear behind me. I'd spent hours playing that fantasy through in my head, but today the reel wouldn't take. I turned west, away from the fields, and faced the peak. Chapter 2. The Midwife Do you have calendula? the midwife said. I also need lobolia and witch hazel. She was sitting at the kitchen counter watching Mother rummage through our birch wood cabinets. An electric scale sat on the counter between them, and occasionally Mother would use it to weigh dried leaves. It was spring. There was a morning chill despite the bright sunlight. I made a fresh batch of calendula last week, Mother said. Tara, run and fetch it. I retrieved the tincture, and my mother packed it in a plastic grocery bag with dried herbs. Anything else? Mother laughed. The pitch was high, nervous. The midwife intimidated her. And when intimidated, my mother took a weightless quality, whisking about every time the midwife made one of her slow, solid movements. The midwife surveyed her list. That'll do. She was a short, plump woman in her late forties, with eleven children and a russet-colored wart on her chin. She had the longest hair I'd ever seen, a cascade of color of field mice that fell to her knees when she took it out of her tight bun. Her features were heavy, her voice thick with authority. She had no license, no certificates. She was a midwife entirely by the power of her own say-so, which was more than enough. Mother was her assistant. I remember watching them, that first day comparing them. Mother, with her rose petal skin and her hair curled into soft waves that bounced around her shoulders. Her eyelids shimmered. Mother did her makeup every morning. But if she didn't have time, she'd apologize all day, as if by not doing it, she had inconvenienced everyone. The midwife looked as though she hadn't given a thought of her appearance in a decade, and the way she carried herself made her feel foolish for having noticed. The midwife nodded goodbye, her arms full of mother's herbs. The next time the midwife came, she brought her daughter, Maria who stood next to her mother, imitating her movements, with the baby wedged against her wiry nine-year-old frame. I stared hopefully at her. I hadn't met any other girls like me, who didn't go to school. I edged closer, trying to draw her attention, but she was wholly absorbed in listening to her mother, who was explaining how cramp bark and motherwort should be administered to treat post-birth contractions. Maria's head bobbed in agreement. Her eyes never left her mother's face. I trudged down the hall to my room, alone. But when I turned to shut the door, she was standing in it, still toting the baby on her hip. He was a meaty box of flesh, 
and her torso bent sharply at the waist to offset his bulk. Are you going? she said. I didn't understand the question. I always go, she said. Have you seen a baby get born? No. I have, lots of times. Do you know what it means when a baby comes breech? No. I said it like an apology. The first time mother assisted with a birth, she was gone for two days. When she wafted through the back door so pale, she seemed translucent. Then she wafted through the back door so pale, she seemed translucent and drifted to the couch where she stayed trembling. It was awful, she whispered. Even Judy said she was scared. Mother closed her eyes.